The biggest news of the week is GPT 5.2 was dropped. I covered it in a video yesterday, so I won't go too deep into it, but it is a really really good model. It excels at coding, knowledge work tasks, frontier math, and so much more. If you have any paid OpenAI accounts, it will be available to you in chatgpt.com. Next, speaking of OpenAI, the unthinkable happened. Disney is partnering with them. OpenAI is going to bring Disney characters to Sora. So you're going to be able to prompt Sora and use the likeness of many beloved Disney characters that you know well. This is the first major announcement of its kind. I believe there is a huge market for fans to create fan fiction based on real IP of companies, and Disney is the biggest holder of them all. Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, of course, all of the original Disney characters. There's just so much there, and I'm excited to play around with it, obviously. OpenAI needs to go above and beyond to put guardrails on Sora so that Disney's characters are not misused. Now, I'm immediately thinking of Pliny the Prompter and letting him go wild on Sora. And basically, there's no possible way to fully prevent these models from generating inappropriate videos of these characters. There's just no way. That is the nature of non-deterministic artificial intelligence. So we're going to see how this plays out. It's going to be interesting because there's certainly going to be some viral videos featuring Disney characters that shouldn't be doing what they're doing. This is a three-year licensing agreement. According to the announcement, Sora will be able to generate short, user-prompted social videos that can be viewed and shared by fans drawing on more than 200 Disney, Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars characters. And listen to how cool this is. A selection of these fan-inspired Sora short-form videos will be available to stream on Disney+. Plus. So I really think an audience being able to create stories around this well-known IP is actually going to be super beneficial for Disney. Disney will also become a major customer of OpenAI, committing to using its interface and its API. And most importantly, Disney is making a billion dollar investment in OpenAI for equity. They are investing and taking a piece of OpenAI, which just seems like incredible deal making really on both sides. Bob Iger from Disney, Sam Altman from OpenAI. And so I'm really excited for this. And literally on the same day, Disney sent a cease and desist to Google. So this was really a big win for OpenAI this week. According to Variety, Disney has accused Google of widespread copyright infringement using, of course, Disney's IP. And they sent a cease and desist letter to Google. And Bob Iger and Sam Altman went on CNBC this morning to talk about it. And he also said, yeah, we just sent the cease and desist to Google. He also mentioned that they tried to have conversations with Google and those conversations stalled out, probably in terms of licensing. And ultimately they went with Sam Altman and OpenAI. This is the face of a man that just had a big win. And specifically, what are they accusing Google of? Listen to this. Google is infringing Disney's copyrights on a massive scale by copying a large corpus of Disney's copyrighted works without authorization to train and develop generative artificial intelligence models and services and by using AI models and services to commercially exploit and distribute copies of its protected works to consumers in violation of Disney's copyrights. Now that is a massive accusation if it ends up being true. So at this point, Sam Altman is known in Silicon Valley to be just a masterful deal maker. And if this doesn't highlight his abilities, I don't know what will. In the same week that they launched GPT 5.2, they also landed a blockbuster deal with Disney to be really the first company to leverage Disney's IP or a major company's IP, no bigger than Disney, in artificial intelligence. And then on the same day, a cease and desist to Google. One thing I've learned is never bet against Sam Altman. All right, next, Time Magazine has revealed the cover of the 2025 Person of the Year, and this year, it is the architects of artificial intelligence. So let's go through the two covers. And the one on the right is obviously more interesting. There's Zuckerberg of Meta, of course, Lisa Su, AMD. We have Elon Musk, we all know who he is. Jensen of NVIDIA right in the middle. We have Sam Altman, OpenAI. We have Demis Hassabis of DeepMind and Google right here. Surprisingly, no Sundar. We also have Dario Amade of Anthropic and Feifei Li on the right. Now. Missing, as I mentioned, Sundar, 
but also Ilya Sutskever, Mira Marathi, Satya Nadella is missing as well. And if this image looks familiar, by the way, let me just show you what this is referencing. This is a very famous photo of construction workers building the Rockefeller Center way back in the 30s, and it was taken during the Great Depression. It's just a very iconic photo. And it's interesting to see that they use this photo, which has a lot of negative connotations to it, to AI architects. And you know who else should be Time's Person of the Year? The sponsor of today's video. With the amount of code being written increasing so much because of artificial intelligence, the bottleneck is becoming clear. It's code review. I've heard stories where PRs can take weeks to get merged just because there's so many of them and so few humans to actually review them. That's where Greptile comes in. Greptile is an AI code review tool that takes code review off of your hands. Greptile can review all of your PRs and it actually learns as it goes. And so how does it actually learn? Well, you can do it manually by tagging Greptile with direct feedback or giving it thumbs up and thumbs down to show comments that you like or don't like. But it also learns from the review discussions in the comments itself. So if you give another engineer feedback, Greptile will see that and learn it and provide that feedback automatically next time. And it adds it to your repo rules without you having to do anything. You can also add your own custom rules and basically you're just unlocking the ability to take all of the AI code, review it as if it were reviewed by a human and get it merged much more quickly. Try it today, 14 days for free. I'll drop links down in the description below. Thanks to Greptile for sponsoring this video and now, Back to the video. All right, next, in which seems like the most obvious announcement ever, Adobe is bringing their major products to ChatGPT. You can now edit in Photoshop in ChatGPT, but also you can use Adobe Express and Acrobat all within the ChatGPT environment. I've been saying this for a while, but ChatGPT is quickly becoming the default internet. The same way that Google has been the internet for the last 15, 20 years, ChatGPT is now quickly becoming the standard. It is the place you go. They are going to define the internet for better or worse for you for the foreseeable future. So within ChatGPT, just like so, you'll be able to edit images using Photoshop plus natural language. It's actually really neat. I mean, to be honest, Dolly and really just ChatGPT image generation is coming for Photoshop's lunch. So the fact that they're getting ahead of it and getting to where the users are, I very much appreciate. So again, all of this is done in natural language, but now you have the tools that you might be more familiar with with the Adobe suite of products. All right, next, according to the information, China's DeepSeek might actually be using the frontier chips from NVIDIA to train the next version of DeepSeek. And why is that a big deal? Well, those chips were banned. Chinese companies should not have them. I think it was probably the most well-known secret in Silicon Valley is that, no, they kind of probably were using these chips all along. All right, so according to the article, DeepSeek has been developing its next major model using several thousand NVIDIA state-of-the-art Blackwell chips which the US has forbidden from being exported to China according to six people with knowledge of the matter. The chips DeepSeek is using were smuggled into China, the people said. And specifically the strategy, listen to this, they're probably gonna make a movie about this in the future, involves sending them, them being the chips, to data centers in countries that are allowed to buy them, dismantling the servers containing the chips, and importing the equipment in pieces to China to then reassemble. Wild. And so even more, why is this a big deal? Well, there's been a lot of talk about Huawei chips being good enough to train the next generation of models on. And it's becoming clear those chips are actually not good enough. DeepSeek in particular has been known for their efficiency in pre-training and RL, but it is becoming apparent maybe there's a little fudging of the numbers there. And they even talk about DeepSeek's innovations. By the way, I'm not taking anything away from the DeepSeek team. They put all of these cutting edge techniques out in the open, people reviewed them, and they are very real. Specifically sparse attention, which allows DeepSeek to get these models to answer questions with far fewer parameters used at the inference time. And Blackwell chips specifically are really good at this sparse attention mechanism. So we'll see what happens. And I really am super excited to see what R2, DeepSeek R2 ends up looking like. And according to this article, maybe we'll see it in February for the Lunar New Year, but we'll see. All right, something that also just came out is Runway ML's Gen 4.5. This is their new iteration of their Frontier 
text to video model. So you can see everything you're seeing in this video was created by Runway and the realism, the detail, the colors, the taste, it all looks incredible. This is on par with anything I've seen from Sora, from Google with VO. And if we look at the benchmarks, here's Runway Gen 405 at an ELO of 1247 on the artificial analysis text to video leaderboards as of November 30th, VO3 coming in second place, Sora 2 Pro all the way down here at 1206, although keep in mind the Y scale, definitely seeing some chart crimes lately, but still performing very, very well. A few other examples, in this one we can see a complex scene, lots of different objects in the scene. We can see reflections in that picture frame, there's a very realistic looking bird over those dirty dishes, the tissue, the camera movement, everything looks incredible. Over here we have animals, it looks like a goat pulling a polar bear that's sitting in an ice cube, very, very realistic. We have displacement of fluid motion. Here we have physics accuracy. So we see a cactus hugging a balloon and of course the balloon pops, very cool looking indeed. And human expressiveness really detailed, uncanny valley has been closed. Look how real that girl looks. So you can go try it out, go to Runway ML, let me know what you think. Next, according to Bloomberg, Meta is moving away from open source. This is incredibly disappointing to hear. My heart is breaking a little bit. Of course, I'm reminded from the famous quote from Batman, you either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. Well, unfortunately, when you make so many statements and so many positive affirmations towards open source, and then now it's seeming like they're moving away from that, the perception becomes even worse versus if they were just closed source all along. So a few things to know, Meta Platform Inc's Mark Zuckerberg is getting personally involved in day-to-day -day work and pivoting the company's focus to an artificial intelligence model it can make money off of. Now, making money off of it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna go closed source. The new model, which is codenamed Avocado, is expected to debut sometime next spring and may be launched as a closed model that Meta can sell access to. Meta can still sell access to open source and they can provide services on top of selling their open source model and still build all of that goodwill but again, maybe they're not gonna be doing that. Meta strategy shift comes after the company released Llama 4, which was a while ago, kind of a flop, an open source model that disappoints the Silicon Valley and Zuckerberg, and the company is now using several third-party models as part of the training process for Avocado. Very interesting. It was also reported that they're moving money away from their AR VR division and into AI. So I think this is the most blatant example of him saying, yeah, we probably made a mistake with AR VR, at least to that degree of investment. They've also been recruiting some of the top people in the AI industry, so they are definitely going all in on AI. Zuckerberg is another one of those people who I would just never bet against, so don't count them out. I just wish they continued their open source journey. Now, here's something really interesting. The TBD group, which is their group led by Alexander Wang, is using several third-party models as part of the training process for Avocado, distilling from rival models, including Google's Gemma, OpenAI's GPT OSS, and Quen. So yeah, why not? They put them out open source, why not use them? I still think Meta is in an incredible position to really compete strongly in artificial intelligence. I made this little chart about which companies are well positioned, where they are strong and where they're weak. And if you look at Meta right here, they don't have a frontier model, but they have basically everything else. I know they're working on custom silicon. The only thing that they're not doing right now is serving a diversified set of models, which means serving your competition's models. And last, Rivian, the automaker, and I actually have a Rivian, I love it, has announced a bunch of updates on their autonomy day. First, it seems they're developing their own custom chips. They are going the Tesla route and they are verticalizing as much as they can. They are introducing their third generation compute platform. Now, one of the weaker points of Rivian right now is the fact that they don't have great self-driving, but hopefully that gets fixed soon. It seems like it's coming in 2026. And they also announced that their in-house neural network engine will run directly on the chip that they're building. And they're also adding LiDAR, which is super interesting. Tesla and Elon Musk explicitly moved away from LiDAR, saying it was overly expensive, overly complicated, and because humans can drive with just their eyes, 
AI should be able to do the same thing with just cameras. But now they have a multimodal sensor system coming, including cameras and radars, providing more information about the surroundings. And if we look at Waymo and how well they're doing, they use LiDAR. So maybe there is something to that. So all of this is very cool. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I can't wait to have better self-driving in my car. So keep up the good work, Rivian. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.